Hello and welcome to Middleware Friday for February 9th, 2018. This is episode 52. And today the topic is what interests my boss fascinates me. And I'll explain why that's the title of this episode shortly. So now onto the focus of this content. So a few weeks ago, I published a blog post on the Flow blog called What Interests My Boss Fascinates Me. And really this post was inspired uh, through some conversations I had with Mark Speaker, who's an industry solutions executive in Calgary, Canada. I was recently up there uh, speaking at a couple of different events, the Azure User Group and also an oil and gas digital transformation event. And we got chatting about flow and what are some of the potential use cases of it. And so Mark's a pretty progressive guy and had a lot of interesting ideas. And one of the, the ideas was how he could use flow in order to really understand what's important to his boss in order for him to be able to provide good information to her in order to support her in her role. And Mark does travel a fair bit and he's constantly dealing with customers. So as you can imagine, he, like a lot of us, probably comes back to a pretty full inbox. So something he wanted the ability to do was to have a process running in flow that would go through his inbox, looking for emails from his boss, and then have flow uh, via a cognitive service API, try to understand what some of the key phrases were or the key topics that were in his mailbox. He then wanted the ability to automatically search Bing, looking for relevant articles that would help him gain perspective on the topics that his boss was interested in. So let's go through this flow and at the tail end of this episode, we're then going to go take a look at some other ideas that are somewhat related to this that can also provide a tremendous amount of value to an organization. So here we go. Let's jump into the demo. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk through the solution step by step first. And then once um, once I've had a chance to explain what I've built, then I'll go ahead and run it. And that should make more sense. Uh, so this is a flow and we can schedule this flow to run every single day or however often we want. Uh, the second action, or I guess the first action, the second shape, that I'm going to go ahead and call is the get emails action, which is uh, office part of the Office 365 Outlook connector. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go look for emails from myself in this case. Uh, but this is where you would put your boss or whatever other person you're interested in gaining more insight from the emails. And I can choose the top number of emails that I'm interested in. Next, I'm going to initialize a few variables really just to help me um, manage the overall process. As you can imagine, I'm going to be building up essentially an array or table of topics and related links. So I want to be able to capture those. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through each body, each email body that is received. And I will go ahead and append the subject to my news array. And you'll see why later. I wanted the ability to label the related articles and links uh, and link them to a specific email subject. Next, I'm going to go ahead and set the key phrases variable. In this case, it's just going to be blank for now. And also the key phrase count. And I'll explain this shortly why that makes sense. Now, most emails these days come in HTML and certainly passing HTML markup to the key phrases API is not a good idea. <laughs> so what we'll do is we'll just remove all of the HTML markup and pass the raw text. Next, we'll pass that text into the key phrases API. Now the key phrases is part of the Azure Cognitive Services suite of APIs. And more specifically, part of the language API set. And within this language APIs, we've got text analytics. And text analytics is going to provide us the ability to extract the language that the text is in, key phrases which we're going to use, and we also have the ability to determine sentiment. So we're not going to use languages or sentiment for this particular 
demo, but I have used them in the past as well. So back to the flow itself, um, and, and it is worth calling out that you can go ahead and get a free API key, a trial key, and the link is in the blog. Uh, so you can go ahead and try all of this stuff out uh, without any additional uh, consumption beyond what you're going to use inside of Flow. Now, what will happen, and we'll, I'll show you the run details after I run this, is that we can have uh, multiple phrases. We could, would expect many phrases to be part of an email. Now, what we don't want to do is we don't want to have like 100 key phrases, because if you have 100 key phrases, you're really going to miss out on some context. So what I do do is I'm going to restrict this to 10. So if, as long as I've got less than 10 key phrases, I'm going to go ahead and append it to my key phrases array, or my key phrases string. And the reason for this is I'm going to essentially append them all, and it's going to act as my query string that I'm going to then go ahead and pass into the Bing API. Now the Bing API, there is also an out-of-the-box connector, but I wanted a little bit more control over how the connector was going to behave. And as a result, I've decided to just call this from HTTP. I still had to go ahead and sign up for a subscription key, which I have here. I've naturally um, blocked out my key, but I'm going to pass in my key phrases that I've assembled from the key phrase by calling the key phrases API. I'm going to also restrict the result set to just three. I don't want 100 results to be in my email, but you can obviously uh, change that if you want. Now I do want to pass in the CC parameter, which really is going to be my environment or location. So in this case, I want to have results from Canada. So for example, there's um, a carbon tax that exists inside of Canada, and that might be one of the key phrases um, that are showing up in you know, Mark's emails, and as a result, I want to make sure that the results are related to Canada and aren't related to some other foreign jurisdiction, um, which will not be as interesting for him. Now, because now because I've chosen to use the HTTP connector instead of the uh, out of the box, I need to essentially uh, construct my typed response. And all I did is I went into Postman and called this API myself, copied out the uh, response body, and then used it as a sample in order to generate the schema. So now I have an actual typed response. I'm going to go ahead and check to see if the response is a value. Now, one of the, the challenges is if you have too many search terms, one of, one of the problems is if you have too many search terms, you're going to get basically uh, an empty result coming back from Bing is going to be like, I don't know what uh, what you're on, but uh, this is the, isn't a relevant query string. So that's why um, I've restricted the key phrases to 10, but I also want to provide a check here because otherwise I can get a failure downstream. Now, if there are no results, I will add um, to my news array variable that no results were found just so that when the email does get generated that includes this digest of information, we can clearly understand if there were no results found for a specific topic. But otherwise, what I go ahead and do is I want to iterate through each one of the items that are returned from Bing and add it to my news array so that I can include the relevant links um, for the, the topic I'm interested in. Now Bing will res return, I think it's about five or six different attributes. I'm really only interested in two, the name of the article plus the URL. And the subject um, is something we've gone over before. This is where I'm going to populate it with the relevant topic or email subject that has been received. After I've gone ahead and selected my columns, I'm going to convert that to an HTML table and then I'm going to go ahead and send the email out to myself. I've had, I have included some additional markup. I'm not sure if you're aware, but we do support some CSS style, styling within um, our body here. So I can go ahead and construct that. Now, in order to automate this, um, as you can imagine the testing, I don't want to be manually sending out emails all the time. 
I've gone ahead and created another flow, which is going to generate these emails for me. So, so Bitcoin mining is obviously a big topic these days worldwide, but it's also something that's kind of interesting in Canada. Uh, there's a province um, called Quebec, which is actually embracing some of the mining operations that are leaving uh, the Asia and more specifically China. Um, so this might be a relevant topic for for Mark and his boss Sarah because um, there's obviously a lot of power that needs to be uh, generated in order to support these types of operations, and they are focused on asset intensive industries such as power generation, mining, oil and gas pipelines, and uh, and uh, and other businesses along those lines. Um, interest rates is a topic that. Uh, is very prevalent these days. So we'll increase. We'll include that. Uh, shale, gla shale gas is uh, is another big topic these days. Um, I guess if within the last couple of years, there's been an explosion of growth in the United States around shale gas. Some of that's moving to Canada, and with Mark and Sarah being in Alberta, that's another topic that would be um, interesting for them. Now, I did create this before the Super Bowl. Uh, the Super Bowl is obviously over. Um, the Philadelphia Eagles won. It was a tremendous game, but um, you know this would be you know potentially a topic that would come up um, if they had an office pool. Of course, we got to include something around my, uh, Microsoft Flow because uh, it's pretty awesome. Uh, and then just there's a, just a few other emails that would also be of interest uh, to to Mark and Sarah. Uh, quantum computing, obviously, Microsoft um, has been investing in this space. So what I've gone is gone ahead and basically run that query or run that flow and what will happen when that flow is run that all of these emails do end up in my inbox and so the next thing we want to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and run that flow that's going to go and inspect all of these these emails try to understand key phrases and then certainly give me a digest of what's important let's go ahead and run this and it should run for, for just a few moments here. So as you can see, here is the email that was created. And let's just quickly go over this just to see how, how accurate it was. So we have a subject of quantum computing and it was related to what's Microsoft's strategy around quantum computing. So that was detected and it looks like some of these links were picked up and, uh, and seem to be relevant. Um, office space vacancy. So uh, in Calgary, uh, there has been an increase in availability. Uh, so it looks like there's some some somewhat relevant articles here. Uh, NAFTA and uh, basically the dollar forecast. So it looks like some relevant some relevant articles here. Uh, same thing with the carbon tax, Alberta's climate. So all in all, not too bad. It looks like the Microsoft Flow one could have been a little bit better. Uh, somehow we pulled in Power BI, so maybe there's some search engine optimization work ahead of us from a flow perspective. But but all in all, like pretty accurate. Um, now I didn't go through and stage this um, too much. I haven't cheated here. Um, I think there's there are some natural limitations of this type of a solution. I think if you have um, really long emails. Um, that have a lot of details, maybe nested links. That's where it becomes a little bit limited. But I do think, um, you know, definitely some tremendous some potential around this, just based upon uh, this example. Take a look at the runtime, and just to give you a little bit more insight of what's happening behind the scenes here. Uh, so let's just go ahead and pick. Uh, so in this case, it's the quantum computing example. If we go into key phrases. Uh, we'll see that it detected Microsoft's quantum computing strategy, opportunities, customers. And then we'll go ahead and call Bing. And Bing will provide a search response and basically gives us some, some links that we can go ahead and check out. Now let's try another one. So here's Calgary Real Estate. And let's see the key phrases. So Calgary Real Estate, a friend, good rate, lease, months, uh, views, market, uh, lunch. And so you can kind of see why you might want to restrict this 
uh, to a specific number because I think as you start to go through this and get more um, phrases, I think the relevancy actually does decline a little bit. So that's part of the reason why I restricted it to 10 because some of these emails went through and had like 99. And so naturally Bing just basically threw up their hands and said, yeah, sorry, I can't help you. Um, you know, there's no relevant results. Uh, here's another one around the Canadian dollar and NAFTA. So it's, you know, I think it was, did a pretty good job of, of pulling that apart. So as you can see, kind of interesting, the key phrases, I think it does work. I think it's just, it's the, the number of them that uh, becomes a bit of a challenge. So lastly, I just want to talk about some other opportunities. And, you know, so this was a list that Mark and I came up with. And um, I think the whole purpose of this is, is try to think about how you can use Flow as an orchestration engine and then take advantage of the other capabilities that exist in the Microsoft ecosystem in order to drive some sort of business outcome. And, you know, and preferably it has one that increases or improves your efficiency. And I think that's part of the, you know, the, the idea behind some of these. You know, so I like number two, like of all of the news released today, what would be the most interest to my specific customer? So imagine doing this for a variety of different customers, right? You know, there's a, there's a story, and that's part of the reason why this scenario really resonated with me. It's, it's a, in the past, I've had a, a sales rep who works for a, a different enterprise software company. I won't mention names here, but he was actually good at his job and he was very successful. And something that he would do every single day is he would go and read the paper and he'd be reading the paper, but in with an eye towards his customers. He wanted to understand what news was going on out there that actually could impact its customers or if there was opportunities. He would then be able to walk in and meet with his customer and be able to to basically describe, you know, market threats or opportunities and how his company could actually help them navigate through those waters. But, you know, you know, I've, for sure, I'm sure for some people reading the paper is, is um, something they enjoy doing, but think about doing that at scale. And I think that's what this technology allows you to go ahead and do. So I think that's really what speaks to, to number 11 here. What are the current competitive threats for my customer. Also, like who are my customers interacting on social media? I think a lot of people have, you know, we've seen the sentiment analysis demo where it's like, oh, okay, what are, you know, customers talking about to me, but also what are they talking about my competitors? And, you know, perhaps there's opportunities if you've got unhappy customers where you have the ability to really uh, scoop them up. So here's just some ideas. I think, uh, you know, it's worth trying and exploring some of these because I do think it will create opportunities uh, for you from a productivity perspective, but also for your company and maybe create a business opportunity. So that concludes this edition of Middleware Friday. I hope this one was insightful for you. I want to shout out to BizTalk360 for being a great partner of the show. Steph Jan will be back next week. I'm not exactly sure what he's got up his sleeve, but I'm sure it'll be good. I do know he is uh, running the Tokyo Marathon here shortly. If you interact with him on social media, be sure to uh, give him some encouragement. I think this is his third marathon, so uh, I'm sure he'll, he'll do great. But that's a, a big accomplishment. So thanks again for watching, and we'll catch you next time on Middleware Friday.